got another absolute value of an entire function here. So the way we're going to handle that is graph the inside function, forget the absolute values there for now, and then we'll deal with them later. So this is just a polynomial. It's going to be to the fourth degree. So that means that our m behavior is going to be up, up, up on both sides. And it's going to go through the zeros. Well, zeros are three from this one. So it has to go through three, negative six from this factor. So negative six. And this factor here will equal zero at negative three fourths, which is right about here. And remember, this is also a double root. Okay. So what that means is at negative three fourths, the graph bounces off. It does not go through negative three fourths because it's a double root. So since I know where my zeros are, here, here, and here, and I know my end behavior is up, up, the graph has to start up here somewhere, come down and go through this zero, go back up, bounce off of this, go back down, and then go up, something like that. Now, we've not figured out how far it's going to go down. We can find the y-intercept pretty easily, and the y-intercept looks like it's going to be a pretty, pretty big number way down here somewhere. So the graph really probably comes all the way down here and then comes back up. But... Let's not worry about that right now. I know I've been kind of on a kick of putting points on here accurately, but right now, for polynomials, it's kind of hard because the, the value just gets so large. So right now, we just care about what the shape looks like for right now. So this is what this graph would look like, but since it is in the absolute value, let's uncover those bad boys. Since it is in the absolute value, all the negative y values turn positive. So instead of coming down into here like this and getting negative y values, what's going to happen is it's going to bounce off the axis there. So this is going to come down like this and it hit here. And instead of going straight through to the negatives, it is reflected off. It goes back up and then it comes down. It touches this point again, goes back up, hits this, bounces off and goes back up. So the red is what this graph will actually look like. And there you go. And a little distinction here between these zeros, at this zero here, this graph is bouncing off. It's kind of creating like a sharp point. So at negative six, this graph looks like this, a very sharp point. At negative one, oh, I'm sorry, negative three-fourths. At negative three-fourths, it's not a sharp point. Remember, this was a double root. So this graph just comes down and it touches it smoothly and then it goes back up again because it was a double root. So it just touches it and bounces off nicely. Um, that's, that's like a natural bounce off. It just touches it and comes back up. These, like this here and this here, they're, they're forced to, to be there by the absolute value. So what's happening is it's actually bouncing off of their like very sharp points. So this graph would look like this, like that. So if we were to take away these points here, what this graph would have to look like would be this. It would have to come down, hit this negative six, bounce off at a sharp point, come back down to that negative three fourths and be nice and smooth when it bounces off of there and then be very sharp when it bounces off of three again, like that. So some along those lines.